today I'm going to pick a ABIS 6440 using this, uh, what is this short hook in 06 millimeters and this medium sized 0.8 millimeter uh, atop the QA tension wrench. Both from Sparrows. I'm going to do this to try to talk a little bit about these because I, I fairly regularly see people on the forums. When I say forums, I literally mean the subreddit, and just for some reason my brain keeps calling it a forum. Anyway, on the lockpicking subreddit, people are always like, I found this Abus, what's inside of it? And they're, like, genuinely, like, almost always a 65 series, or, like, one of the other locks Abus makes that's the exact same thing inside. Like, in my experience, regardless of the, the keyway or, or, like, the size of the, phys the physical size of the lock, they, they seem to be... Abus seems to have like a, a style of pinning that they really really like and with a few exceptions like the the uh, I forget the code they give it but the, the like lockout tag out thing that's all aluminum that thing has uh, standards in it but other than a few exceptions like that they always seem to have the same kind of pinning inside so I'm gonna pick this one I'm gonna try to talk about it uh, while I'm doing it which I'm not very good at but I will try and then I got another one to show you guys what's inside of it. But, uh, oh. I should have got this. So I always start with pin one, regardless of what I think the bidding is like. I actually don't know offhand what the bidding inside this lock is. It was I never had a key for it. Uh, but I always start with pin one. In this instance, it feels like it's pretty high rise pin. But you want to push pin one until you get right or there. You get a nice false set, uh, and that's to do with how they pin these. I will elaborate later. But you always want to start on pin one, and you push that until you get a nice false set. And sometimes it takes another little little push, but I think that was it. Sometimes it'll give you like a little bit of feedback first, but whatever. Okay, so I like to start from the front and go down, so I'm going to go to pin 2. You don't have to do this part this way, I just suggest starting on pin 1 with Avis locks. Uh, but I'm going to go in, pin 2 feels loose, pin 3 feels loose, I think that's pin 4 feels a little tight. I'm getting a bit of feedback off of it, so I'm probably going to lose it, like it'll probably drop pin one. Pin one's the only pin that's set, and I bet you I'm going to drop it. I'm going to try to push pin four up. This is really tight, actually. I think I'm giving it too much tension. Uh, oh, that was pin one dropping. So I'm gonna, there. Oh, okay, that was pin four. I think I have pin four set. Pin one definitely dropped. So I'm going to push pin one back up. I actually saw it drop. Uh, I saw the tip of it pop out from behind the tension wrench there. Come on. There. Okay, so hopefully I have pin 1 and 4 set right now, but I might not. Pin 2 is still loose, pin 3 is still loose, pin 4... I think pin 4 dropped again, it feels like it's down, I'm gonna poke it. Oop, slipped off. I'm going from this ledge here, uh, because I can't really reach up from down here. I should probably be using bottom of the keyway tension, realistically. The, the, I have a lot of space down here that I could use for that, but I just am a little more comfortable holding it like this, with the way it's all set up on my desk, so that... That's fine. Anyway, looking for pin four. That's pin four. It's nice and oh. I gave pin four a little prod and it started to move a little bit freer. But I think, yeah, it's still giving me some counter rotation, I think. Come on. Oh. I'm honestly not sure if pin four is set. Pin one is still set. I think I got pin four set. Pin 2 is still loose. Pin 3... Oh, I think I'm getting a little counter rotation off of pin 3. Or am I? Yes? It's hard to tell. No, maybe not. Pin 2... Okay, I just pushed pin 2 all the way up and started getting a little counter rotation because I think it's inside the spool right there. So I'm going to push it. No, is that set? I think I slipped off of it. I didn't set it. There, that was pin 2 set. 
Okay, pin three's still loose, but it's doing the same thing. Once I push it up, it starts counter-rotating, even though it was loose, so it didn't feel like it was binding. And then, oh. Oh, I think I dropped something else. And keep pushing pin three. No, I think pin three said, was that two? I think two fell. No, I think one and two fell. Let me push one back up. There, that's one. Two again. Ooh. Come on. There we go, that's two. One's still good. I'm gonna go past three. Four feels like it's maybe still set. Oh, what about five? How's five? Oh, five's down. Five is down and binding. I'm gonna push on it. Come on. Oh. Come on. Oh, five is like not. Five doesn't want to play. Five is in a bad mood. Oh. Was that five? I honestly can't tell if I set five or dropped everything, but it might have been, oh yeah, one's down. Let me push one back up. There, that's one. Two's back down. That's two. Three feels okay. I think, I think four's back down. Yeah, that's four. Come on, four. Oh, no, that was me slipping off of it. Come on. Oh, that was everything dropping, but I think I got four up. Three feels set. That's two. I think I just set two. Is one down? One's down. Nothing wants to set with one down, and I will elaborate on why that is later. Come on, one. Oh, maybe one isn't down. Okay, two. No, one did fall. One. No, somebody's overset. All right, I gotta reset. Let's try this again. Starting on one. There's one. Down to two. There we go. Two is binding. And I think, yeah, I dropped one. Just gave it a tiny tap. And one and two now both feel set. Let's go to three. Three is giving me counter rotation. Oh, something dropped. I think I set three and dropped one. There's one. One one. It's two, two dropped again. I think I got two. Oh, there's two and one did that thing again. Three feels like it's still set. Maybe four. There, 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 there. Oh, something dropped. I think I got four set. I think three is still set. Two, I think, dropped when I might have just set it. Or is that one? Oh, that was one. Two is still good. Three feels good. Four feels good. Okay, if all goes well, I just gotta poke at five a little bit, and she's open. Ooh, five feels loose. Let's give, is it gonna give me counter rotation? I'm pushing five up, and it's giving me a little bit of counter rotation, I think. Maybe not. Hmm. Is that four? Oh, I think that's four, actually. Oh, I dropped something. But I think I got. It's hard to tell if four's up, what dropped. One's good, two feels okay, three feels okay, maybe not. Okay, back to four. I might have had five bound and it dropped. Give me, come on. I think that was four. Ooh. You know, I picked this like super quickly twice before I started filming too, but whatever. Oh, five is binding. Maybe. Oh wait, one's down. Feels like four. Maybe, was that two? That's two. One fell. One back. Did one fall? Oh, somebody's stuck. Okay, there, it was one. 
I'm probably putting like a lot of tension on this lock compared to what it needs, but that's I'm not very good at feeling feedback, so I'm just trying to make it easier to like tell that it's happening. Oh. Okay, I think I just jiggled something into Yeah, that was four. It's not set. I just got it really deep into a false set because of the spool. And I'm trying to push on it very tenderly. And it's counter-rotating, but it doesn't want to go over the lip of the spool. But that, that was it. That dropped something else. Fuck. Ooh. One feels good. Three feels good. Oh, those four popping back, I think. Oh. Come on. No, that was one falling. I might abandon this take. I'm not even lying. This is like I'm getting real bad luck. Oh, oh. Okay, that was four, I think. Come on. There. Ha. Ah. Okay. So, these are kind of trouble, and so after picking a couple of them, I got my hands on a little batch of these with no keys. After picking a couple of them, I, I decided to sacrifice one. And so I ripped one open, and here's what I found inside. And the thing about these is I've, I've also picked some, uh, what are they, 83s? Uh, I think I have that. Yes, please. I picked some 83s. Uh, this one's not stock anymore. These these cores have the same style of bidding inside of them, even though they're different size pins. But your first one is always one of these very lightly serrated barrels. Uh, actually, I can probably get these a little closer to the camera. Please focus. That's kind of working. I need more light. Oh, they're all sliding. I shouldn't have tilted it. Okay. So... Your first one, pin one is always one of these. They kind of act like a standard. You don't always get a lot of feedback from these really tiny serrations, even though it is a barrel pin. It's not like tapered or anything. It's just a little serration on either end. And sometimes you feel them. Sometimes, sometimes in a particular lock, they're very noticeable. Sometimes they're not though. In this particular one that I just picked, they're not. It happens. Uh, and then all the rest of them are spools. And so that's why I'm saying always go to pin one and then start checking because you won't pin one is gatekeeping in these locks. They, they seem to do that on purpose because pin one falls on you a lot, too, because of the way that these are like well made. <laughs> and so trying to get over the, the inner edge on all these spools is, is a great way to drop the other ones. So these are fairly well designed for, for being comprised of like nothing that creative. They are very well implemented and a lot of it is basically hinging on them being machined well. Um, but it works. Uh, but the other side of the coin is that, that like knowledge is power on this sort of thing. Since I gutted a couple of these and realized this is sort of how Avis does it. Like when I first got, I, I got like, oh, how many of them are there? There's like eight or nine of these locks that I got on like a, like a sales board that, that the local locksmith shop was getting rid of. And they didn't have, they never had keys for any of them. So they, they were just like, here, you can have this. And I was like, thank you guys so much. Uh, but anyway, um, I, I was having some trouble with them. And then I was kind of like, I wonder if they're pinned the same as the other Abus lock that I, that was easier to open up. And I just sort of assumed they did and tried to pick one. And, and so I started on pin one rather than just feeling around randomly. And that, that actually worked really nicely. Uh, that started to demystify them a little bit. And then I decided to pop this guy open with a file. Uh, I have since then, can you even see those? I have since then, uh, tried my best to, there we go, turn this into a little practice lock. It kind of works. Uh, I'm always a little concerned about ripping out these threads because they're super close together and the uh, the grub screws I used are a little big. Uh, so, but either way, you know, it's all right. It's good for this. Um, but this this is how Abus, oh, I, I put it off screen. This is how Abus seems to pin their locks. They seem to be very, very proud of this pinning. And I mean, I 
agree with that uh, of them. They they are right to be proud of this. That most of why this works isn't because this is like oh super crazy ingenuitive designs of pins. They were like all right, these are the pins that are the easiest to make, the cheapest. How do we use these in a way where our locks don't suck? And the answer is machine the body of the lock like you give a fuck and hey look it all works actually really nicely and these are quite difficult to pick like i I'd very much recommend these for trying to learn how to pick uh security pins because these are an excellent example of of uh like a factory pinned security pin lock in my opinion like the, in comparison to a lot of other locks like uh, th these are within the price range of locks that very rarely have security pins from what I've seen, it might just be local to me in Ontario, but the Abus seems to manage to get their locks onto the market around here at about the same price as, like, you know, Master Lock or, or unless you're buying, like, particularly cheapo locks, you're going to be paying, you know, 20 to $30, depending on the physical size of the lock, and for that price, if you pick an Abus one, you're getting pinning like this versus, like some guy with one eye closed and a hand drill putting the body of the lock together and then they just sort of use a pair of snips on some some roughly the right size rod no i'm kind of taking the piss a little but you get what i'm saying like that considering these are equally priced with a lot shittier locks this seems like a really really great buy uh like security or not like for whatever reason if you want to play around with them if you want to learn to pick this kind of lock i very much recommend these these are great Maybe not so much these ones, but the 83s that are, like, that much easier to take apart. Like, the... I'm just going to quickly go over this. The way that you got these is insanely easy. It still has the the thing on. You would pop that off. But this button thing on the back, you just push that. Can I... Oh, of course, this is the one with goofy pin. Hang on. Yeah, so this lock... Uh, Wait, is this the key that works? Okay, one of these keys works better. This is all... This is a challenge lock inside. There we go. Okay, so... They're super easy to get at. They're... they're if... If... You want to repin these, or you want to play with them, these are super easy to get at. And... Even if you don't want to do it that way through the window... I've also seen some of these that don't have the window. I think they invented this fairly late in the, the lifetime of this body or something. I don't know. If you don't want to do it that way, you pop the thing off... You push that down and it just goes in and and these these are quite good like for the, for the features that these things have they could be key retaining or not in the the padlocks that i bought them in they got a little bar thing they uh they're very easy to play with once you demystify that for yourself like that that's a little bit like how do you do this but once you know you watch one or two videos of someone doing it they're really good like i these are very well put together i'm pretty sure these bodies are steel i don't do i have a magnet Oh, okay, no, they're not. Uh, they're definitely not aluminum. I don't know what these are made out of. Magnesium or something? But Oh, that's weird. I mean, it might be stainless. Okay, because the lock that I bought this in was weatherproofed, and so I kind of assumed this was steel with some sort of chrome on it, but it might just be, like, chrome steel, but that seems crazy to me. I don't know. It's supposed to be weatherproof, so I actually have no idea what they've made this out of. All the in inner bits are brass, uh, and then the lock has, like, a plastic body on it. And I think the actual chassis of the lock is made out of aluminum, but it doesn't hold any of the pins, so it doesn't matter. Anyway, these are great. Uh, these these make the challenge locks. The precision Avis puts into these are really, really good. These ones, I've only seen them in pretty beefy lock bodies, and so they end up being more expensive. I don't know, you could probably just order this fucker online if you wanted, but th this is a good body. It, 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 I've only seen them using, uh, what are this, SC2s, or whatever the six-pin one is, the Schlage keys. These guys use... I think that's a Yale keyway, I'm pretty sure. I actually don't know, because mine didn't come with keys. But I've, I've seen these with different keyways, and they have the same pinning. Uh, I'm sure they make these with different keyways, and I'm sure they have the same pinning. And I'm sure that that pinning is really good. Uh, so I'm basically recommending these locks to use as a lock or to learn to pick on, because this is, this is a great place to start, I think. Uh, if, you, if you're like, I need to know there's security pins in the lock when I buy it, I don't want to be blowing a shitload of money on a lock that I'm just going to take apart eventually, and I want it to not be, like, a terrible example of this. Because I've seen some locks that have security pins in them that, like, are, like, maybe, like, cheaper American clones and things like that, where they sort of understood to make security pins, but they didn't try that hard. And it's like, 
they're not good to practice on. Like, they might be, to be fair, the, the time I'm thinking of, it was in this stupid, like, beefy steel body. So, I mean, like, in terms of, like, physical security, it wasn't really phoning it in as much as the core of the lock was, but that's all irrelevant. If you want to practice, get your hands on one of these. They, they've got, uh, uh, that little guy has security pins in it. It's got four pins, and it's, it's like, those, and they're tiny. I'm probably going to take this one apart, too. But all of these locks... Uh, various sizes have the same fucking oh fuck it's not stuck have the same pin in oh fuck me uh, these locks all have the same pinning on them and it's good I think these are great these are like they basically all have the same core they just scale it up and down uh, I, think, I think these two have a bigger one these guys all have the same this one might be smaller it doesn't matter like they, they have this pinning inside. So when you see an Avis lock, I suggest if you're looking for security pin practice, this is this is good. All these are pinned the same, and it's like this, and it's well done. Uh, so yeah, good picking. Don't fuck around. <laughs> uh, I'm still working on a catchphrase, but either way, I hope you. I hope this video taught you something. <laughs>